Hey guys, I thought I would do a, a quick video. I'm on site today with a job. We've got a American Standard heat pump system here. If you are a homeowner that you got a heating and air company telling you that your system is low on refrigerant, I wanted to do a video showing you kind of what we're seeing, what should the refrigerant levels be, and what they're kind of looking at when they're determining that. So again, this is an American Standard unit, 410A refrigerant. I want to show you a couple things. The first thing is probably the main measurement that we look at these days, considering the metering devices are now usually some sort of valve, a, a TXV or some sort of metering device that opens and closes like that instead of the old days when we had fixed orifices or pistons. And a lot of the systems will have on the label, so on this one, if you look right here, if you look right here, it actually tells you, hopefully that's not too blurry, it actually tells you what the subcool measurement needs to be. So basically what that is, not to get too scientific or too crazy with this, in layman's terms, the subcool measurement is the difference in the saturation temperature of the refrigerant and the actual temperature of the line set itself is how we do it. So we'll usually take a measurement. You see my temperature clamp right here. It's measuring the temperature and then our gauges are measuring the saturation temperature. So if you look on our tool here i just got done charging it so we are right at eight degrees sub cooling and you know you can kind of see what the pressures are so the liquid lines way up here close to 300 suction is over here at 132 all these measurements mean something different to us but the big one that i wanted to show you if you've got somebody that tells you you're low in refrigerant that's what we're looking for we are looking for whatever that design pressure is on that label. So a lot of them will say it right there on the label and that's what we're looking for. So anyway, I hope that helps. If you've got a company that is looking at the refrigerant levels, a lot of times that's what they're looking for. That's what they're shooting for target wise. And sometimes you may have to add refrigerant or remove refrigerant, whatever, to get it dialed in perfectly. That's when you know the system is operating as efficient as it can without freezing up coils and all that good stuff. So with the proper amount of airflow across that coil inside and the design subcool pressure met here on the outside, that system should run at tip top shape. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, our videos are all about heating and air and most of our tips are for homeowners. Please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.